we're seeing exponential growth in the price and performance of computing, the ease of access to these technologies, and just the, you know, just the continual doubling and tripling of information that is uh, giving these technologies more and more power. The availability of data, machine-readable data, cheap computing, and AI is not only enabling the automation of work, but the augmentation of human decisions. In other words, it's making people smarter. So for us, what we're seeing is it's not time for a step change, but we're seeing big, big change for tax. So we really see this as a period of uh, tax being reimagined. And it's not a scary thing, but a very exciting for us. So instead of thinking about what people are doing to manage people in a process in an analog world, think about what is the end goal you're trying to achieve? And how can you get that at end goal with intelligent automation as an enabler, as opposed to a people checking people or a sneaker network approach to getting something done? The, the value is shifting from just the core technology to the, to the trainers who are building these or training these learning systems. So knowledge and expertise matter, point one. I mean, you can't build intelligent systems without that. And that's what our friends from KPMG bring. But if we look at things like natural language processing, uh, the use of ontology models or domain-specific vocabularies to extract data in context and use that in automation, uh, machine learning, much of this has, has come very, very far in a very rapid period of time. And if you incorporate these with RPA, then I, you really expand the art of the possible. We're no longer looking at the problem as this. We've kind of broken the problem down into a set of steps that really starts us to get on the path of automating. So we're not standing there with deer, like deer in headlights saying, where do I start? What do I do? What are you trying to solve? And then what do you think the data sources are that you need? And clean it that way. Even with great data and great uh, technology underpinning it, if you don't have the right domain expertise and technical expertise training those models and using that data and that technology and bringing it together, then you're not going to be able to deliver on the value either. So the culture of the organization, you will only be able to deliver the transformation within your organization at the cultural speed of your organization. So you need to make that culture as a, well, you need to make the program as efficient as possible, but you're never going to go faster than your organization's culture will allow. It's a combination of machines, or cyber, and human talent. And the more that we augment expertise, the more that we take the roboticism out of our people and allow our people to leverage cognitive skills to solve for problems, the more capital intensive we will be, and the more important those machines, and by the way, data, will be to our industry. The technology conversations usually start with, could I automate this? But then as you move up to leadership, it's, well, should I automate this? What does this mean? 45% of my workforce, or whatever that number is, what does that mean to my company? But what does that mean to society? How are we going to pivot our society to be able to have the workforce of the future match the jobs of the future? I think one of the things some organizations in, in, in making that jump will underestimate is the creative and innovative power of their own organization. I think it's going to create more opportunity than it's going to displace significant amounts of our workforce. The discipline they have to really come with is the ability to learn how to learn and how to then harness these new tools to continue to differentiate themselves People try to redeploy people. There's a huge value in having employees and having them know your corporate culture um, and having, ha having internal networks within your organization and being able to get things done. So you're not gonna just going to necessarily get rid of 50% of your workforce. You're going to try to have them do other things. It's about matching people to the challenge and avoiding either having people doing work that's quite frankly beneath them or indeed putting them into positions that's way above their capability. This workforce of the future is built on problem solving and creativity and innovation. If you could teach a machine to do this boring work, 
you can free people up to prioritize issues, fix deficiencies, connect with customers, and think and innovate, which is what people want to do.